It's early morning on Niwot Ridge. At the University of Colorado Mountain Research Station, snow hydrologist Mark Williams starts another day at 9,300 feet, coaxing a reluctant snowcat into action. And one of the big projects here is uh, the Niwot Ridge Long-Term Ecological Research Project, uh, Niwot LTER. When we get right to about 10,000 feet, we're going to hit snow line. Williams is an explorer. His discoveries are trapped in snow, along with the critical questions about how nature stores water and the process by which it's released throughout the arid west. Let's say you're going to take a shower. Okay, where does that water come from? Most of it comes from the mountains. At 11,000 feet in the Colorado Front Range, we have somewhere around four to five times the amount of annual precip as we do in Denver. But exploring the source of our clean water can be hard work. When the snowcat is no longer just reluctant, but stops entirely, Williams and his fellow researchers have to strap on skis to go further up the mountain and get hip deep in the snowpack. Here, winter temperatures hit minus 30 centigrade. Deep below them, the path of the snowmelt is percolating through an intricate surface and subsurface system. So how deep is this going to be, Jeff? That Snow accumulates during the winter. Uh, it's kind of like a bank where you got this really nice capital account. One question that we're trying to address with this research is how much water is stored as snow in these high elevation areas? And the reason we want to know that is so that we can answer this question, how much of the water that's used at low elevation, i.e. by the city of Denver, for example, comes from the mountains? Our best estimate is that somewhere between 60 and 90 percent of all usable water uh, in the western U.S. comes from snowmelt runoff. But Williams and his team of researchers look at far more than water quantity. Their work touches on climate change, groundwater storage, snow hydrology, and pollution. In fact, the Colorado Rockies hold the entire code to the puzzle of water, both its origins and our future ability to supply it in the quantities we want and the quality we need. Researchers dig snow pits to make vital measurements of the atmosphere, including air temperature and meteorological conditions. And they build an array of snow lysimeters, underground boxes that isolate snow melt from soil water runoff. So now we're under the snowpack, and there's all these snow melt lysimeters here. Each of these pipes is connected to a collection basis that's a basin that's out uh, in the snow that just is going to measure the water from snow melt set up so that we're not measuring soil water or anything else, it's just snow melt water. Researchers have mapped the snow melt, and in truth, it continually recharges groundwater storage pockets, pushing older water out into streams while banking newer snow melt for later years. And you can think of the groundwater as a big sponge, and it has some storage, and then when you fill that sponge up, uh, water leaves it and enters streams, and, and away we go, we use that water. This is. A, a very unique site. I think it's the only one in the world uh, that, where we have an underground, under snow laboratory. Uh, we do a lot of other things here as well. One of those is we measure trace gas fluxes through the snowpack, and at times we've measured uh, N2O, CO2, methane. Climate change is the big question out here. As temperatures warm, what are the impacts on snow and water storage? If we switch it from snow to rain because it's warmer, we're going to end up with less usable water because we're going to lose that uh, banking effect that we get from the seasonal snowpack. And we're going to lose more water to evapotranspiration. Uh, so and it's, a, it's a positive feedback that gets out of whack really fast. Air temperatures are going to increase because we're simply putting more energy into the atmosphere. One of the things that is going to happen is the dry places are probably going to get drier because they're going to heat up faster. and that's a prediction for the southwestern United States, and that appears to be happening. Water is a zero-sum game. The good thing is we can't lose water. We can't destroy it. The bad news is we can't make more water. 